Now we create another word called sent message. Again, it could be anything we want. But in this case, we decide that sent message makes uh, some sense. And what we do is um, that sent message is assigned all this text. The name of the person is logged in. It says says. And then the entered text. Um, entered text is another uh, variable that we're creating here, another word. And that's assigned um, to whatever is return from this function. What ASP does is it asks a question and waits for an answer. Uh, so what the user sees is you say whatever they type at that line is returned and called entered text. And all of that is joined together. That entered text is joined together with the name of the user and that little uh, text in between. That's called sent message. So that sent message dealt with this way. We have a switch statement, switch with a default uh, answer in case something is to catch all the possibilities for whatever is entered. We take that entered text, the thing that was returned by uh, that ask function, whatever the user typed in, and we test it for a number of, uh, number of possibilities. All those possibilities are contained in this block goes all the way down to here, to down to here, and there are a couple possibilities, and these are the the, na the words, the control words that the user can type in. If they type quit, the, the uh, forever loop is broken out of. Uh, if they type clear, what happens is not anybody can do this, only the user, or only the administrator can do this. So there's a little if, else function if um, now the request password is the request password function is uh, executed if the answer to that is uh, secret and password then um, you write to the web server uh, that uh, a little bit of text which is just an empty empty text, which means at that web server address, at that text file that we've been writing to, basically just erase it. Otherwise, else, uh, we alert the user, if this request for password was not equal to secret and password, that's our username and password, uh, alert the user this bit of text, you must know the administrator password to clear the room. And again, we're using a multi-line uh, multi uh, quotation here using the curly brackets. You can enclose any multi-line text uh, between curly brackets. It's just like a quote, um, but it lets you span several lines. We're trimming it so that it only stays on one line here. The reason we're doing that again is so that it fits on the web page. And we have a little bit of description telling what we just did. Uh, if the user types in the word room, then what we do is uh, basically um, writing to the web server again. Um, we're going to a new web server. Um, and what we do is write to that existing web server, that ex existing text file, the one we've been going to, uh, a combination of all this. Time and current name has left the room. Uh, that's telling the current room that we're, we're leaving. And then it gets a new web server address. That's what this is, is doing. It's letting us go to a different room, a different text file essentially. So it's creating a new web server address, creating a new URL, getting some, requesting some text from the user, asking them for a new uh, web server address. And then, once that has been gotten, we write a pen to that new web server. Again, the name has entered the room just like we did in the beginning. So, effectively changes the chat room to a different text file. We can have as many of those text files as we want on the web server. We don't have to do anything on the web server to make this work. This is just writing uh, via FTP uh, text to files on a web server. Okay. Can also lock uh, the program if we type in the word lock. If the user types in the word lock, uh, if they want to go away and they don't want somebody else coming to the computer and typing into that into that room, uh, put up a little alert saying. 
program will pause for a few seconds and pauses for five seconds, the current time plus five seconds. And then we lock the user up and we'll forever loop. The only way they can get out of that um, is by going through this while loop. Again, there's a request password. If it's not equal to secret and password, you get an alert saying incorrect password. The source, which we saw above. Um, and that happens while the request password is not correct. Once that's done, the break statement is issued, and that breaks us out of the whole forever loop that is doing most of this uh, with most of this looping and checking. So that will pause the program for a little bit. Okay, and then there's a final default um, if the enter text is not uh, nothing. But it's nothing. We don't just want to keep writing nothing, nothing, nothing to that text file. That would waste a lot of space. The person, for example, and pressed enter a bunch of times. So as long as it's not nothing, what we're going to do is just write that text to the web server. The sent message that includes the name and everything that we created above, um, and a new line. So what basically happened there was we checked for the information that was entered by the by the user. We do a bunch of things if it's any of those quick, clear, room, lock, um, uh, control words. And um, if it's not one of those control words, and if it's not empty, we just write that text with the user's name to the, uh, uh, the user's name and the, the current time to that text file. And that's, that's how this uh, uh, chat room wor works. Every time someone else logs in, they read that text file and they see what's, what's been typed there. And uh, so the only way to break out of this, what keeps happening is every time someone tech enters some text, it goes to that whole loop again. So once something's been entered, uh, it reads the web server, it clears the screen, it types this header, it reads the current chat, it prints the current chat, and then it waits for the user to type something in goes to that whole checking thing again. If the, uh, the word quit is typed, it, it breaks out of this. If not, it goes through the loop again and again and again, checking uh, for what the user has typed. Once that uh, quit control word is typed in, we break out of the for loop, uh, print the word goodbye, and then we write to the web server that the name has closed the chat, wait a second, and then disappear. That's the end of the program. It's important to see here that um, you can download this program at, uh, again, at the beginning of this tutorial. All of our examples are in this little file. It's musiclessonswithaz.com forward slash rebel underscore tutorial underscore examples dot zip. And that has all of our examples that we're working with. Um, and uh, this actually was, was demonstrated in the first video in this series. So if you want to see the uh, if you want to see the uh, program run uh, in the video, you can see it there a little bit to get an idea how this works. But all these programs, uh, you can actually just run. They're they're as executables. They're as Rebel files, uh, and the the full um, the full uh, Xpacker X uh, XML file is included to show you how you can compile it yourself or uh, wrap it up as an executable. Um, this program is just a, a really pretty common format where you have a, a loop, a forever loop, going to continually do the uh, actions in the program over and over again. A typical, typical kind of format for a, for a computer program. And it uses a switch statement to respond to uh, user import, uh, input. That's really a pretty classic structure, especially for command line type programs, uh, programs that don't have a GUI. Uh, 